the station covering all of the DMV. This is DC News Now. DC News Now at 5, a shock across the country after a devastating injury to a Bill's safety, Damar Hamlin. We spoke with one local doctor who explains just how rare this is. Parents speaking out, controversy strikes Thomas Jefferson High School after a delay in top students being recognized. What parents are saying. Also, stretching your dollar beginning of the year means time to think about taxes. We'll have the best ways to save when filing. And thank you for joining us for DC News Now at 5. I'm Mark Hall. Let's take a look I'm right now, a live look outside where the weather was a bit foggy, but temperatures were in the 60s. Let's head over to meteorologist Damon Madison for checking the forecast. And Damon, could we be seeing warm temperatures really for the rest of the week, or is rain on the way? Well, Mark, we have some rain on the way, no question about it. That's something we're tracking here over the next day or so. But those warm temperatures have been a big story since the new year began. And here today, we tied a record that was set back in 2000, at least at the Washington, D.C. climate site. We did hit 68 here this afternoon. So, again, near record breaking, record tying warmth, as a matter of fact, out there this afternoon. And that has been something that hopefully most of us have been able to enjoy. This just does not happen in early January. Now, temperatures stayed cooler across our northern counties. Places like Cumberland, Martinsburg, Hagerstown didn't get out of the low to mid 50s because of some rainfall and plenty of cloud cover throughout the early portion of the day. But to the south, where we had drier conditions, easily in the low 70s south of Interstate 66 in northern Virginia. And there's those upper 60s back across the DC. Metro into southern Maryland. But that rainfall was short lived. We have been very dry throughout the majority of the afternoon. A couple of showers trying to pop up near the Pennsylvania Maryland line here this evening. But we are going to try to hold on to drier conditions at least through the night tonight before we have that rainfall that is rolling our direction here. That storm system is still off to our west and it will be, will be bringing a line of steady rainfall to the picture by the time. We get to tomorrow, but no worries here this evening. Just a very cloudy sky and those temperatures, they're not getting much cooler at all. We're going to stay in the 60s all the way up until the 8 to 9 o'clock hour tonight. So what is going to be the main stretch of time tomorrow when you'll have to watch out for some soggy weather? And how much are these temperatures going to fall behind this latest storm system? We'll have a check of your full forecast coming up here in just a bit. Because at the end of the day, this is family. It's a game to us. But to them, to these young men that are playing, it's their livelihood. Bill's mafia is with you right here. Fans are reacting to 24 year old Buffalo Bills player DeMar Hamlin collapsing on the field Monday night during the game against the Cincinnati Bengals. Doctors say that he went into cardiac arrest after being hit by a Bengals receiver. Just how common is this in football players? DC News Now's Daniel Hamburg. Talk with a local cardiologist, and Daniel, he says that this is a rare occurrence. Yeah, Mark, he tells me while it's rare, it can be fatal quickly. Sudden cardiac arrest happens far more often in sports like baseball, hockey, and tennis. A warning, the video you're about to see may be disturbing to some viewers. Millions watched this moment during Monday Night Football as Buffalo Bills player DeMar Hamlin was hit by a Bengals receiver, got up, but collapsed two steps later. Every minute that's lost, it decreases survival by 10%. So it's really rather scary when we hear about uh, Mr. Hamlin who had this event and they were doing for CPR for 10 minutes. Dr. Joseph Quash, an interventional cardiologist in D.C., says cardiac arrest in football is rare. It's a low impact, low to mid impact um, jarring of the chest. It can happen project, primarily with projectile objects. So to see it happen in football really is not common. He says kids are most at risk for cardiac arrest between 8 and 18 years old. Automated external defibrillators are on display in many public buildings. That's why you see it so widely distributed in high schools and, and elementary schools even, to have these devices readily available, particularly at sporting events. Before you can get to an AED, doing hands-only CPR can save lives. We got a demonstration from DC Fire and EMS. Easiest is between the nipple lines. So you want to always expose the chest, even if it's a female. Bra off, you put the heel of your hand right in the middle. 
lock your hands and try not to rock or push your whole hand on it. Experts say it's important to assign one person to call 911 and one person to get an AED while you start CPR, pushing two inches to the beat of staying alive. Coming up off of the chest allows for the heart to fill. You know, we want kids to be kids and enjoy sports, not play in fear. Uh, but it is important that for any competitive sports that there is an AED available for this very rare but fa potentially fatal event. Now, warning signs of cardiac arrest include young people saying they're having new fatigue or shortness of breath associated with activities they've done all their lives. It's also important for everyone to learn CPR and to pay attention to where those AEDs are located. In the studio, Daniel Hamburg, DC News Now. Daniel, thank you so much. Tamar Hamlin's family released a statement saying that we want to express our sincere gratitude for the love and support shown to DeMar during this challenging time. We're deeply moved by the prayers and kind words and donations from fans around the country. And New Tonight fans have raised more than $4 million for Hamlin's toy drive. The page was created back in December 2020. Hamlin's organization called Chasing the M Foundation buys toys for children in need. And he had an initial goal of $2,500. That number continues to climb. Well, the NFL announced today that Monday night's game will not be played this week. NFL Commissioner Roger Goodell came to the decision after meeting with both teams and NFL Players Association leadership. What happens next remains unclear. And coming up on DC News Now at 5.30, more reaction about DeMar Hamlin, where we'll bring you the latest on air and online. A new Congress convened for the first time today in a new era of divided government as Republicans take back control of the House. But the party is dealing with its own divisions as it tries to elect its next speaker. Washington correspondent Jesse Tenor has the latest on the battle for the gavel. Good evening. Exactly who will become the next House Speaker is still up in the air, but it's already a history-making day. As Kevin McCarthy becomes the first majority nominee in 100 years to lose the initial vote. A Speaker has not been elected. Opening day of the new Congress kicked off with a battle over who will control the House floor. Biggs, McCarthy, Jordan. I'm not going anywhere. But a core group of conservative Republicans is still leading the charge against Kevin McCarthy's bid for House Speaker. If you want to drain the swamp, you cannot put the biggest alligator in charge of the exercise. Florida Congressman Matt Gates and Colorado Congresswoman Lauren Boebert said McCarthy rejected their demands to update House rules and procedures. We want to change the way things are done here. But many in McCarthy's party were ready to hand him the speaker's gavel. This is not about prom king. This is not about a pastor. This is about electing a person to sit in the speaker chair so that we can all get to work. Georgia Congresswoman Marjorie Taylor Greene said Republican holdouts are being short-sighted. And New York Congresswoman Elise Stefanik reminded her colleagues of McCarthy's wins as GOP leader. No one in this body has worked harder for this Republican majority than Kevin McCarthy. Democrats like Tennessee Congressman Steve Cohen said they were happy to sit back and watch the Republicans struggle. The Democrats united behind Hakeem wow. Jeffries. And the House <laughs> isn't fully formed without a speaker, meaning committee heads, floor proceedings, and investigations can't begin until one is elected. In Washington, I'm Jesse Chenor. New details tonight. The name of the 17-year-old boy that was killed last night was released. He was Mar Martez Tony of Southeast D.C. A 14-year-old boy was also shot. He had non-life-threatening injuries. It happened at Congress Heights Metro Station on Alabama Avenue. D.C. police believe it was targeted. Well, two people have been arrested in connection to a murder on New Year's Eve in Frederick, Maryland. Reuben Williams and Aaron Davis are facing first-degree murder and assault charges. It happened in the Linden Hills community. Frederick City Police found 41-year-old Mary Seward with stab wounds. What led up to the murder still remains under investigation. In less than an hour, parents will rally outside Thomas Jefferson High School, some calling for the principal to be fired. They're upset because of a delay in notification for students recognized as top students across the country for their academic achievements. DC News Now's Annalisa Gale is live tonight in Alexandria. And Annalisa, is the school system responding? 
Yes, Mark, right now we know that the Fairfax County school system did send out a letter acknowledging what they're calling human error, but tonight Virginia Governor Glenn Youngkin is still demanding an investigation. I want to just explode. My heart just wants to explode. I'm so excited. I want to cry and I want to smile. Asra Namani is feeling emotional following Governor Glenn Youngkin's announcement on Twitter on Tuesday. He's calling for Attorney General Jason Mijares to investigate allegations that information about the National Merit Awards were withheld from students at Thomas Jefferson High School. We have been begging for the school board and school officials to recognize that there is serious civil rights and human rights violations going on in our school systems. Each year, the National Merit Scholarship Corporation recognizes top students across the country for their academic achievements using PSAT scores. And each year, Thomas Jefferson High School usually sends out notifications either through in-person notifications or email in a timely manner, usually before early admission applications go out. But last year, the school system system says there was a delay in the fall. They're calling it a unique situation due to human error. That piece of paper is like getting the golden ticket to Willy Wonka's chocolate factory. You know, not everybody gets it. Now I've done research and learned that there are scholarships for commended students that can be valued at $4,000 over four years or up to $100,000. FCPS says as soon as they noticed the error, they notified and staff sent emails and follow-up calls to each college where students had applied to inform them of the National Merit Scholarship Corporation commendations. In a statement, Governor Glenn Youngkin says he believes the failure may have caused material harm to students and their parents and that the failure may have violated the Virginia Human Rights Act. And what are you hoping will come out of this investigation? What we hope is that the principal and the director of student services will be fired with cause. They did intentional harm to children. And the attorney general says he has received that request for that investigation. He's now looking into those allegations. He's also scheduled to hold a press conference tomorrow. We'll be sure to let you know what comes out of that, as well as the rally that's scheduled here in less than an hour. Live in Alexandria tonight, Annalisa Gale, DC News Now. Annalisa, thank you. Maryland made history today as Anthony Brown became the state's first black attorney general. Brown unveiled his plan to help Marylanders in his new role. It includes combating racial disparities in housing, building partnerships with public and safety, and pursuing equity. He also intends to hire more attorneys and increase salaries. It is at this moment that I proudly take the office and accept the responsibility of Attorney General ready to get to work and pledge that central to our mission will be the defense of democracy, the protection of rights, and the pursuit of justice. The AG says he looks forward to working with Maryland Governor-elect Wes Moore.